Hello everyone, we're working on a Construct 3 beginners tutorial. This is actually the first Construct game I have created, which I think is beneficial because I did run into a few errors, so that just goes to show that it's not going to be perfect the first time you do it, and the more you practice, the easier it gets. So, before we get started, I just want to let you know that I am using a Mac, so my operating system it's going to look different from yours if you're using a PC. However, everything in Construct 3 is done right in our browser, so all of that will look the same. So let's go. The first thing we want to do is launch Construct 3. If you have the ability to log in with a license account, go ahead and take a moment to make sure you are logged in. If not, you will use the free version as a guest. So here we go. Beginner's Guide is where we are clicking to access the tutorial. Now this is what the written tutorial looks like and this is exactly what I'm going to guide us through step by step um, for the most part except for where I make a few errors but that's part of the learning curve, right? So if you want to follow along and stop the video and actually read what they're talking about, they go into a little more detail and describe some of these things. And I will be sure to tell you which page we're on and where we're at in the written guide um, so you can follow along that way. You will need the tutorial open in a separate tab regardless if you're going to read it or not to access the objects that they have provided for us. So the very first thing you need to do when you come into Construct 3 is to click on Beginner's Guide to open this separate tab. Okay, so before we get going, let's actually look at the game. They have a preview here for us to see the finished product. So this is exactly what we are going to be creating. If you want to test it out yourself, there's the link right there in the beginner's guide. And it's just this top-down shooter game. I'm using my mouse and my keyboard to control the player and the goal is to shoot these monsters and you earn points for everyone that is killed. So that is really the goal of our game. It's really simple and I actually had a lot of fun. So the first thing we need to do is select new project, title it, I'm gonna just call it beginners tutorial because that's what this is, and click create. This space that Construct 3 takes you to is this layout area and on the left you have a properties bar on the right you have your project bar and layers bar and then across the top of the screen you have sections to switch between layouts event page the starting page and then they have the menu the save button which is very important undo and redo buttons as well um, as the preview button. So that's just a basic idea of everything we're looking at here. And the purpose of each of these areas will make more sense as we go through and start utilizing them as we create our game. I also want to let you know that the Beginner's Guide breaks every section down into chunks, and since this is a really long video, I will also do that for you so you know where to start and stop when each section begins and ends, and then that way you can save and take a break if you need to um, throughout the video and creating the game. Okay, here's the part where you need to open up that tab of the beginner's guide, and we're going to start adding objects into our new project. The first thing that we're going to add is a tiled background. Right click on the image they've provided, and you're going to save it somewhere on your computer. I'm just going to put everything onto my desktop. So right click, save image as, again, desktop, or put it in a folder but make sure it's in a location you can find. And you also want to make sure the name is something unique that you can remember and locate. So that's just our background. Now we're going to go back to the actual workspace, the layout space in Con Construct 3. Double click anywhere 
and then scroll down to find tiled background and double click. You're going to get this little crosshair on your mouse and you're just going to click and drag to select a space. When that happens, the image editor is going to open up. Once you're in the image editor, on the top left there's this little folder. Select that and then locate the background image that you saved. Select the image and then click open. Now that our image is loaded, you can select the X in the top right hand corner and it's obviously not covering our entire layout area. And obviously it does not cover the entire area, so the way to fix that is over on the left hand side in our properties bar, find the position and size settings and you're going to change those and it will fill the screen. Here are the numbers that you're going to enter, so take a moment to do that. Okay, now that we have our tiled background the way that we want it, covering the layout, um, we need to lock it in place. And before we do that, I just want to show you how you can move the layout around to pan and scroll around. So you click Control on your keyboard or Command if you have a Mac and scroll with the mouse scroll. And you can also hold spacebar and just move the mouse around to kind of pan around. So that's what I'm doing here. Now to lock this in place, we are going to right click on the tiled background and then select lock, lock selection. And then if you wanted to undo that for some reason, you right click again, select lock, unlock all. Okay, let's start adding the other game objects into our layout. You're going to have to go back to the beginner's guide. We are on page two, and it's the same process as the tiled background. Right click, save as, and save it wherever you feel appropriate. Again, I'm dropping everything on my desktop, and my computer just automatically opens the image once it downloads and saves, so. You also want to make sure that the names are saving as explosion, bullet, monster, and player. It might get confusing when you start downloading a lot of these objects and you won't be able to keep track of which ones they are if they have random names. So it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, now we have our object images saved to our computer. We're going to insert them into our layout. So double click anywhere and find the sprite option. It's under general, double click that. And you're gonna get these crosshairs again and just click anywhere with the mouse and the image edit editor will pop up. Find that little file and select the image that you are inserting, click open and then exit out. Now I'm just gonna go through and repeat this process for all of the images. There's the player, monster, bullet, and explosion image. You double click, select Sprite, click, file, find the picture, and that's it, click the X. Double click, Sprite, click, file, find the image, done, exit. That's it. Now let's actually take the explosion picture and the bullet and drag it off of our background. It's just going to sit off into this side. So all you do is click it and drag it over there. Okay, now we wanna make sure that the names of each image is specific, just like when we save them. Right now it just says sprite one, two, three, and four. That's going to get confusing when you start having a lot of these images. So select the image and over under properties, change the name to explosion, bullet, monster, and player. 
The next step is adding behaviors. So now we are on page three of the guide. And unfortunately, I need to pause before we add the behaviors because I realized at this point in creating my game, I had not saved it at, at all, which is not a good move. You really should be saving right from the start. So take a moment, if you haven't done this already, click that save button and select where you want to save it. I picked my Google Drive. Hopefully you have a Google account that you can save that to and you can name it whatever you would like and put it anywhere. When it has successfully saved, you will get a little notification in the bottom left corner saying that it's saved. Okay, let's get back to adding these behaviors and we'll bear in mind to click that save button the rest of our time making the game. So basically, um, a behavior is going to control or start to tell an object what to do. And I'm not going to give a lot of detail. Um, the guide does have this written in depth. So if you want to read about each one, go for it. Let's just, I'm going to show you how to add the behavior. So the first step is to select the object that you want to add a behavior to. We're going to start with the player, so click on the player. And then over in the properties bar, it should say behavior. And then add edit behaviors. And the part you want to click on, it looks like a little blue link. Click behaviors and then it'll pop up a screen that says add new behavior. Select that. Then you're going to scroll down and find the eight direction movement. Click that and then select add. Now we are actually going to be telling our player uh, giving it multiple behaviors. So don't close out. Click add new behavior again. This time we're going to find the scroll to behavior. and then select add. And then the third time, add new behavior, find bound to layout. And at this point, we can preview our game and now you can see our player is moving around when we use the arrow keys and basically it's not gonna fall off the edge. So this is the progress we've made so far in the game. Let's go back and click that save button so we don't lose it. And now we're going to start adding behaviors to the other objects that we have inserted. Okay, now we're going to add behaviors to the other objects. We're going to work in a similar fashion and start with the bullet. So select the bullet with one click, then over on the left hand side under properties, find behaviors, click behaviors, add new behavior, this time look for the bullet movement, select add or double click, and we're going to add a new behavior again, and we want to select destroy outside layout. That way when it reaches the end, the edge of the layout, it disappears. And that's it for the bullet, so click the X. Now we're going to make the monster move around and we're going to use the bullet behavior again. So select the monster, click behavior, add new behavior, bullet, and that's it. Exit out. Now on to the explosion. This is going to fade when it blows up. So click on that explosion, click behavior, add new behavior, look for fade. and exit out. Okay, before we preview our game, we want to change the speed of our monster because we want it to move slower than a bullet. So click on the monster once and then over the in the properties bar, under the behaviors section, find speed and change it from 400 to 80. And that means that the monster is going to travel 80 pixels per second. So slowing it down. Next, let's select the bullet 
and change the speed under the properties bar again from 400 to 600. This will speed it up. Lastly, we want to make the fading of the explosion a little bit faster. So click the explosion over in the properties bar, under behaviors, find fade, and then fade out time. Right now it says one, we're gonna change it to 0 0.5, which is half of a second. Okay, we have worked super hard, so make sure you click that save button and then give your game a preview. Now you can see that not only is our player moving, but the monster is moving on its own. And we can't see any of the other features just yet, like the bullet or the explosion, because we have to add some actions. And that's what we're going to do coming up. But first, before we move on or take a break, I would like you to actually duplicate your monsters because you need more than one. And the easiest way to do this is to hold control or command on your keyboard and then click on the monster and just drag your mouse around and it will duplicate and give you all of these different monsters. So do seven or eight of them and make sure you spread them out because wherever you start the game, the monster is going to start in that spot. So you don't want them right on top of your player or you're going to die really quickly and not have enough time to defend yourself. So again, the goal right here is to click control, drag, and duplicate your monsters. Click that save button and get ready to learn about conditions and actions. Here we go, adding the events. Again, our guide really talks a lot about the events and the conditions and actions and sub-events. But here right in front of us is an empty event sheet and I'm gonna keep it really, really simple and basic. If you wanna see more, go to the guide, but this is all you need to know. The condition is over on the left and that is what needs to occur or happen for the action or action event to happen. So in this example, if the bullet collides with a monster, then the monster is going to be destroyed and then the bullet is going to be destroyed too. But that bullet has to hit a monster first for that to happen. So it's kind of like an if then statement. And I also want to mention that the actions will occur from top down. So if the bullet destroy action was on top of the monster destroy action, the bullet would be destroyed first. So it's something to keep in mind as we move forward. All right, let's go ahead and make our first event. All we have to do since this is an empty sheet is double click and this is going to be a system condition. So click system. Now we're going to select every tick, and a tick just means all of the time. This is always going to happen. So you can see we have written our condition, system on every tick. So all of the time something's going to happen. Now click the add action button on the right to determine what that is, uh, what's going to happen. Add action, player, Now we need to find set angle toward position. Next. And here's where I ran into an issue because I skipped the very first step that the tutorial put us on, which means you also have this error if you were following me and not the writing. So let me explain briefly what is happening. I'm trying to type in here our variables which should, or our, our parameters, I'm sorry, parameters of the action. Um, and I want to type in mouse point X for X and mouse point Y for Y, and I can't do that. 
So I tried to just, I thought it was something weird, so I tried to do it again. Then I finally got an error message, and this is when I realized I had skipped a step. So basically this is going to keep correcting to monster instead of mouse until we fix the issue. So fast forward to fixing the issue, and here's what we need to backtrack and do. Go back to your layout tab at the top, double click anywhere, and then we need to add mouse. And then we need to do it again for keyboard. So now you can see over on the project side, those two things, the mouse and the keyboard have been added. Now if we go back to our event sheet and we click add action, player, set angle toward position. Now type in mouse.x, mouse.y. Done. And we just made our first event. And when we go to click preview, you can see now our player is going to follow our cursor as we move it around. So that is what we just programmed it to do and it seems to be functioning correctly. So make sure to click that save button so you don't lose all of your hard work and we are going to keep moving. Okay, more game logic. Essentially here we are just going to keep adding in conditions and events to build our game. And I'm gonna walk through this a little bit fast because I'm trying to keep this as short as possible and it's a lot of just click, click, click. So pause whenever you need to, feel free to do that or go back, rewind, or check out the guide as well. And we are on page five in the guide right now if you need to go there. Okay, let's do it. Double click, mouse, next, on click, done. Add action, player, spawn another object and the object it's going to spawn is a bullet so click to choose select the bullet and it's at image point zero right now so just click done so basically what we just did is every time we click the left button on the mouse our player is going to spawn a bullet or shoot it out and you can see in our preview that's happening but it's coming out of his head and we want to move that to the end of the gun so let's go ahead and fix that right now on the right hand side in the project bar right click player edit animation this is going to pull up the image editor over here select this little icon and it brings up the image points right now all we have is origin so if you right click you can add a new point Once that new point comes up, it's going to be this little blue dot, and then you can click the point and drag it to the very end of the gun. If you go back and look at our action, it still says image point zero, so we need to double click on that action so that we can edit it and change the image point to one. Now when we go ahead and preview our game, it is shooting bullets from the actual gun. Okay, let's make these bullets actually kill monsters. So here is our new condition. Double click, bullet, on collision with another object, select monster, done. There's our condition. Add action, monster, destroy. Add action, bullet, spawn another object, select explosion, done. And lastly, add action, bullet, destroy. So what we just did is made the condition so that when the bullet hits a monster, the monster will disappear, the bullet will then 
make an explosion appear and the bullet will go away. However, if you go and preview it right now, don't forget save, the explosion is there, that's awesome, but it has this weird black box around it and we don't want that, so let's fix that right now. Over on the right hand side in the project bar, select explosion and then jump over to the properties on the left and you're going to look for blend mode and change it to additive. Once you do that, click preview and you'll see that the black box is gone and we just have an explosion every time we hit the monster, which is perfect. Moving on, before we take a break, hit save. What we wanna do now is make the monsters a little bit smarter. Double click to add a condition, select system, on start of layout. Now for the action, monster, set angle, random 360. Now don't just type in 360, random 360, and put 360 in parentheses as well. That was an oopsie that I made. Alrighty. Okay, now we want the monster to actually chase after us. So we're going to create a new condition. So double click, do not select add action. I made that mistake to start. Double click, it's a condition. Monster, outside layout is outside layout is what we're looking for now. Next. Okay, that is our condition. Now add action, monster, set angle toward, position, and our two parameters here are player.x and player.y. That's going to make the monster turn towards us. If we hit preview, we can see after a little time that the monster will actually follow us and they don't just randomly move around like before. Now we're gonna move on to using instance variables and essentially what we're going to do is make it so we have to hit this monster more than one time with the bullet before it dies. So we're gonna give it like a health counter essentially. So in the project bar, Click on the monster so we have it selected. Then over under properties, find instance variables. Click that, add new instance variable, and we're going to name it health. Obviously it's a number and the value can be one, um, five. The initial value is five. It, ha it starts with five health. Click the X and in our preview you can see I'm shooting it but it's still dying after one. So I double check my instance variable, make sure it's okay and then I realize I need to move on to the next step, this is why it happened that way. So we have to basically rearrange the events. Um, just like I said before, it goes from top down. So click over here where it says monster destroy, where our condition has bullet on collision with the monster. And we need to replace that action with monster subtract from and just leave the value as one. Done. Now it's going to subtract one health from the monster every time it's hit instead of destroying it. So here in our preview you can see I'm hitting it and it's just indefinitely not ever dying now. So we have to actually create an entire new condition again. So double click monster, compare instance variable, 
health less than or equal to, leave the value at zero. At first, I accidentally kept at equal to. You want it equal to or less. Now add the action monster spawn explosion. Done. Add one more action monster destroy. Now, once the monster explodes, then it will destroy. And once it's equal to or less than zero health, which means after five times, it's finally going to disappear. And you can see that actually happening. It's working now. So good job. Our game is pretty much coming together. Okay, now we are going to put in a way to keep score every time the monsters are killed. And the way we have to do this is by adding a global variable. So right click in the open space in our event sheet and select add global variable. Change the name to score and the initial value is zero because you haven't killed any monsters at that point. Select OK. Now you can see at the very top of our page, the global variable has been added. It's this green bar. And we need to be able to give the player a point now for every time it kills a monster. So we are going to add another action under the monster health condition. Add action, system, add to. then keep the variable or the value as one. Now every time the monster gets destroyed, the score will go up by one. So click save because we made a major change. We are now on page eight for those of you following along in the guide. Now we need to actually have text. So go to that layout tab and we need to add a layer. Don't be confused between a layer and the layout. A layer is different sections layered on top of one another. So we can make changes to a new layer, but not make any changes to this layer zero with our background. So right click in the layers bar to add a new layer put add layer at top and we're going to just name it HUD which stands for heads up display and now make sure HUD is selected by clicking on it. The next step is to make sure parallax is set to zero. This will make sure that our score is static and it's going to basically stay in the same place and follow our player around. So under the properties bar find parallax and change it from 100% to 0%. Now we're actually going to add the text, select the HUD layer, double click anywhere, and then select text, not text input. Text, insert, the crosshairs come up and then you can click anywhere to insert it. Now once the text does pop up, it's going to be this really small black font, very hard to see. So if you select the text box over on the, on the left under the properties, you can change the color and the size. The tutorial does not tell us anything specific. I changed the color to this lime green because it's easy to see against the dark background and I made it pretty big. Once you have your text looking the way you want it to, we have to go back to our event sheet so we can actually program and tell the game to add the score. So let's add to that every tick condition at the very top, add action, text, set text. Then type in score colon and score. 
And at first, I couldn't determine if you needed to have these quotes in here or not. And it turns out that you do. So essentially, you're going to put the quotes, score, colon, quotes, and symbol, score again. Let's run our game and see what happens. Now, once we officially kill the monsters, you can see our score goes up by one, and it is also following our player around as we move. So we did it. Okay, so our game is pretty much complete. We are just going to top it off with a couple finishing touches. The, the first thing we're going to do is make our game automatically spawn some monsters on its own so that we don't run out. So we have to create a new condition. We're going to double click, select system, every x seconds, value of 3 seconds. Now we'll add our action. Click Add Action, System, Create Object, Monster, and for our X type in Layout Width, Layout, W I D T H width layout width plus 100 and for y type in random parenthesis layout height parenthesis done And finally, for this last part, we want the player to die if a monster runs into it. That's the point of defending yourself. So create a new condition. Double click. Monster. On collision with another object. Choose player. Done. Action. Player. Destroy. All right, let's save and run it. Let's see our finishing touches. Everything looks good. And if our player gets run into by a monster, he should disappear. Yep. So there it is, our first ever construct game. Now, we can go ahead and tinker around and add other features to this, like a game over image once your player dies, or different kinds of enemies, some audio, a title screen, different things like that. You can now advance this game, and this is just the basics of it. And I think we put a lot of work into this, so make sure you hit save. You can export your project if you want to publish it somewhere. And that's it. It's our finished construct game. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and it was easy to follow. And good luck. Keep creating.